Hello, my name is Tyson McCooney. I'm from Synaptics, uh, from the touchpad or PC group. And today I'll be talking about our palm rejection uh, performance using AI on the latest platforms. So is there, uh, is there a lot of AI that could be uh, used to make a better touchpad? Yes, so we're using a a AI to uh, improve our palm rejection algorithms on our touchpad. So as many people may know, one of the problems that occur for touchpad, uh, users will complain about the palm check or the palm algorithm that is not accurately uh, detecting palm versus finger. And that is the highest priority for Synaptics in order to uh, satisfy our customers. So what I have here is two systems, one of, some, of a system already in production and a system that we are, or prototype of one that we have uh, in development using AI to improve our palm rejection. So uh, palm rejection is particularly difficult on the edges of the pad because you may have half the palm on the pad and then half the palm off of the pad. So the contact may look like a finger. So what I see here is uh, the finger is represented by the green and the palm represented by the red. So as I demonstrated earlier, it's difficult to do palm rejection on the edges because it may look like a finger, sort of represented by this demo in production. You'll see that while I'm tapping or rubbing, sort of sim simulating my fingers on the home row typing and palm may be hitting the edges, but you'll see that a lot of these contacts are registered as a finger on these edges. So that's what's in the market now. This is what's in the market today. So this is our latest uh, ACM, which is an acronym for Accidental Contact Mitigation, our palm check algorithm that we're developing with the neural network. This is completely new. This is still a prototype at this, at this stage, but you'll see under the same conditions, the same PC, the same settings, it's registering correctly as a palm on the edges due to our neural network algorithm. So even if I drum, I'm simulating typing here. It's accurately detecting the palm on the edges. Uh, that is awesome, right? Yes, yeah, so this is very important. This is the first step of improving our um, palm rejection algorithm. And it becomes more important with the, uh, the haptic force paths that are penetrating the flagship PC. So with force now, we may further enhance or improve our algorithm by using the force data to more pr accurately predict finger, uh, palm, or a flat thumb uh, to further improve our performance. Is it because uh, you are able to recognize a shape that doesn't look like a finger? We're looking at different things uh, using our data set. Uh, we're looking at contact, contact size, where the finger's landing, how it's landing, uh, different types of characteristics to improve our palm rejection. Because uh, the, the way the finger touches and the, the shape of the touch and Correct. everything and the pressure maybe or... Correct. It's so not looking at fingerprints or something like that. No, no, no. It's not yeah. fingerprints. It's, it's clearly looking at the contact area, how it's coming in, the timing. Um, and then, like I said further, uh, when we have more of the force pads in the market, we may uh, use the force data to further improve the performance. Because... Uh, one thing I really enjoy is when uh, these new laptops have huge yes. uh, mouse pads. It's kind of cool to have a big one. Correct. So that this enables even bigger Correct. track touch pads, yeah, right? So this, the, the whole point of, of enhancing our palm check algorithm is, is sort of uh, because of the trend of these larger size pads, because they are more modern, they're more attractive, and uh, from a performance standpoint, it gives you more area to do gestures, to do pointing, uh, if I'm doing scrolling, like for example, if I have a long document, I don't have to repeat the same gesture uh, to, to, to go to the page I want. The bigger the pad, the more scrolling area I have. So, so what more stuff are you showing here at this booth, at this area? So we have different solutions uh, for touchpads. So here we have a, what we call a collaboration pad. So uh, anybody that uses Zoom or Teams, uh, we integrate the important uh, buttons within Zoom, within, our, within the touchpad. So when I'm presenting something within the company, um, 
like this here. Let me, let me close this real fast. Um, the UI or the GUI is usually hidden. So if I want to mute or if I want to turn off my camera, what I have to do is I'd have to move the cursor. The UI pops up, and then I have to make the, the function in order to turn it off or on. But with this, the icons are shown in front of me. I know exactly where they are. The LED color tells me if it's on, if it's off, what the status of the, of the solution is. And if I don't want these solutions, or I could just simply turn it off with a simple swipe nice. uh, to turn it off. Uh, the LEDs. Is it possible to customize what's there? Correct. Uh, so so it could be all are, kinds of different icons? Different icons, different functions, different LED colors. Everything is uh, customizable. That's awesome. Uh, it doesn't exist? This, this is already in the market today. Ah, it's in the market? Yes. So some brands out there are doing something like that? Correct. And more more brands are starting to get interested in this. That's really commercial. differentiating the, the whole laptop. Correct. The correct. experience and people are going to say, oh, I don't want one without those. Correct. Correct. I mean, it's added in additional functionality on already the touchpad, so it's a good thing for us. Yeah. Uh, here is the haptic force pad. So uh, traditional PCs today have a click pad, so a mechanical solution with a button. Uh, but most of the flagship PCs are moving to haptic force pad. This one is using our capacitive touch with capacitive force integrated together. Um, so our solution is different from their competitors in the fact that uh, we don't need to purchase third-party force sensors, third-party force ICs, and MCU to, to integrate both touch and force. All of our touch and force is integrated in a single PCBA controlled by a single chip. The force means uh, different pressure does different stuff? Correct. Uh, so the, the force is cur currently used to enable a click. Uh, so basically a right or left click gives you um, the force data. Um, so once you pass a certain threshold, we give the signal to the haptic actuator to fire that a button event has happened. And uh, behind here, do you have some kind of secret? What is happening there? What is this uh, this board? This bo okay. This is a for the future. Um, we are also investigating with or investing in piezo sensors. So this is a function row um, in front of here. Uh, there are some OEMs interested in, in a buttonless function row. So what we have here is an early demo of a single. It could be like in the bezel or something. Uh, it's in the, yeah on the top of the bezel. So it instead of these the top, buttons here, it could be on the it, part of the metallic it, part it, there. Uh, it can't be metal. It has to be some kind of plastic material, non-conductive material for the uh, capacitive sensing to work. But um, uh, the the point is, uh, it's a good ID. It's a little bit more futuristic, seamless, so you don't have to worry about water getting in. Um, and you can customize it by d different LEDs to give you different um, uh, colors. And it's uh, basically a seamless solution. And you still get the tactile feedback coming from. So it vibrates? Correct. Uh, the whole thing vibrates or only where you touch? The, there's piezos. Uh, it depends on how you want to configure it, but I think this configuration, there's a piezo disk under each button. So we could detect, using piezo disk, you could detect both force and you could uh, have an out, haptic output. Nice. Are they uh, uh, vibrating uh, um, in the touchpad Correct. a lot? So we're also investing in piezos, not only for the function row, but also for the, the touchpad. And the thing that piezos gives you that LRAs currently do not, uh, I'm not sure if you're aware of the seamless ID that sort of Dell has in, um, used. Uh, Piezos are more efficient in giving you haptic output in a seamless solution. Uh, they're much thinner, they're much lighter than the LRA counterparts. And also with LRAs, or sorry, with piezos, it could give you different patterns using the, the partnership that we have with this company because they're multi-channel. Uh, for example, instead of a the LRA vibrating the entire pad, uh, because the piezo chip that we're using is uh, multi-channel, you can only have to vibrate the, the piezos around where the finger is. So instead of vibrating the entire pad, just the area where the finger is, or because it's multi-channel, you could have different vibration outputs uh, across a different pad instead of one a single uh, a pattern. Nice. That uh, gives a lot of new opportunities to design nice touchpads. Correct. And what's over there? 
some these other are fingerprint things? solutions today so so what uh, do you do with the fingerprint so right now there's trends of fingerprints integrating somewhere in the keyboard uh, historically they, they were sort of in the palm rest like you see here um, but their OEMs are sort of moving the fingerprint into off this button into the power button here uh, this one's uh, a keycap that's illuminated uh, we have nice. different options uh, you could have illumination non-illumination uh, this here's a static key uh, that a certain OEM has adopted. Um, we can provide the entire solution, the sensor only. It's up to the, the customer on how they want to design it. Nice. Uh, can it even move like a button? Yes, that one, this one moves. This one should goes move in, like right? One. Yep. Nice. All right. And uh, what's the accuracy and stuff like that? It needs to be very accurate and quick. And oh, does that is that part of the fingerprint Correct. Uh, supplier? It, I, I, we are probably the, in terms of security and accuracy, we probably are the number one uh, supplier in the market uh, for PC. So again, our uh, our fingerprint solutions are our, the matching happens locally within the chip itself. So none of the fingerprint data goes outside uh, to the host. Is there something to do with resolution? There's a resolution part of it. Is there like always imp improvements in resolution to have better, uh, faster or something? Uh, right now, most of the OEMs are looking at faster. Um, so as soon as you tap or you press the fingerprint, they pretty much want instantaneous uh, recognition and um, unlocking your PC. And all these solutions here, all running on little chips. Correct. That you supply is how is small, very small. So it's about, about five by five millimeter uh, chip that we. Have for our touch. And there's been many generations of this over the time? Correct. Uh, we've been doing this for many, many years. Uh, we we start, our bread, Synaptics bread and butter has started with touchpads. So uh, we started with touchpads. We uh, did touch screens and then we started doing fingerprint and then we're now we're doing like IoT solutions. You know.